ako na mtoto mmoja msichana ako mwaka mmoja na miezi tatu. Nilipata ujauzito kama niko kidato cha tatu. Before nipate ujauzito wake ilikuwa issue na step dad. Mom alioleka na mimi kwetu niko msichana peke yangu na wavulana watatu. Mom na dad wakaanza kugombana. Dad akitaka mimi nirudi kwetu na mom akakata. So mom alienda hiyo usiku tukabaki si peke tu kwa nyumba. Si niko msichana peke yangu na brother zangu watatu. That night brother yangu mwenye ananifuata akaniambia sis leo mimi nita kulala mali wewe unalala. Nikamuuliza ni kwa nini akaniambia hakuna nataka kulala hapo. Nikasema ni sawa. Akalala hapo ndio mimi nikalala mali alikuwa analala. That night dada akakuja saka tumelala. Alidani mimi ni ule brother akaanza kumshika kona na huyu akaanza kupiga nduru kushtuka hivyo kwa uzingizi amemshika anataka alale na ye. so si tuka tukaanza kusukumana hapo na tukatoka sisi wote nje asubuhi kafika mama akakuja na watu wa kijiji tukawaambia vile ilikuwa na dada akasema ni lazima nitalala na huyu mtoto ni shiriki na yango no kwa si damu yangu Mamangu akasema kani hivyo haitawezekana. Ni beta mini toke niende na mtoto wangu nyi mbaki. Tukaenda na mamu tukakaa kwa grandfather for almost three years tukarudi. Fisi likosekana ndipasa maana nikaamua nikae nyumbani baada ya kukaa nyumbani nikaamua niende uyaya nikapatana na huyo boyfriend wangu akaniambia akani twende na yeye tuishi kwake wakati nilipopata mimba alinidanganya tu aka akaniacha pale na yeye akatoroka na mimi nikaamua niende nyumbani wakati nilipofika nyumbani babangu alinipiga kaditusi akani akanifukuza nikaenda kwa jirani nika nikaishi kwa jirani hadi muda ulipofika wa kujifungua huyo mtoto wakati sasa alivyokuwa mkubwa kiazi ndio sasa nikaamua tena nirudi nyumbani aligombana tena na nikaamua tu niishi sasa nifanyaje fika mali tena imekuwa kama repetition akinipata ka niko peke yangu kwa nyumba aezi toka atashinda hapo kwa kiti anatafuta excuse ndogo ndogo ili apate hiyo freedom ya kugombana na mamu juu yangu but imefika mali mama akaniambia niende home kwa kina father nikae huko nikae na grand father mwenye anazaa babangu mwenyewe nikaenda so kufika huko imekuwa tu changamoto ya food nini vitu tu ndogo ndogo so ni hiyo wakati ndo nilipata ujauzito wa mtoto wangu after school fees si kulikuwa na nilipiwa nililipiwa only one term peke yake na nikabaki huko si kwa naenda shule wakati tulikuwa tunakuja church hapa SK so tukambiwa kuna wageni wanakuja kutembea kwa church ndio nikasikia hapo hivyo kuna shule inakuja hapa inaitwa na Jizali project inakuja kusaidia the teen mothers wakatuambia kama unaweza jaribu kukuja uombe nafasi wa kuchukue ni sawa ndio nikakuja nikaomba nafasi nikapewa wakati niliposikia na chijali nahitaji watu niliambiwa kuwa nitasaidiwa sana na mtoto wangu maishani mwangu uh, 
uh, Najijali is a project that uh, seeks to educate teen mothers and it is basically telling these teen mothers that they come first in their own lives. We did a survey in the community and we realized we had many, many girls who had dropped out of school because of teen pregnancies. We decided to come in with the Najijali program. We go into the communities and we use community health volunteers and counselors and get deeper into the community and seek the statistics that have been captured by the government. They're there, we know them. But when you get interior, there's those girls who, are not, who have not been captured. So that was what we were doing and we captured most of them and we take them back to the colleges, the, uh, the VTCs, that is uh, vocational training centers, and then we give them life skills. And the main focus that we are having right now is uh, fashion and uh, design, or we can also call it uh, tailoring and garment making. Right now I'm having uh, 42 girls, uh, most, of them, most of them have got babies, they have one or they have twins. Uh, these girls are here because they really want to acquire skill. So we are hoping that by the end of six months, each and every trainee will be able to cut, to craft, cut and stitch as a person. We also teach them about entrepreneurship. You see, that one is part of the skill. Uh, these trainees will be able to stand on their own. Once they are supported financially, they will be able to, to stand on their own. Currently, we are having 25 girls in, in the program and uh, these girls are finishing in July. Come September, we are going to have the second batch. Greca came into being uh, in the, at the time when COVID was uh, on. At that time we were working at Chole Community Resource and Peace Centre and there we were doing projects uh, by Harambe Centre and so we had this project that uh, we were giving uh, relief food to victims of hunger, victims of uh, COVID-19 and victims of, uh, of uh, floods and that's when we came to realise that we had more in the community that was affecting people. So we decided to come in with the Najijali program. We realized that we have to partner with other like-minded organizations. And because uh, we have been working under Harambe Center uh, in the USA, in other words, I mean that we implement Harambe Center projects here in Kenya. So when we came up with the project Najijali, we did uh, uh, approach Harambe Center, and Harambe Center again, uh, you know, linked us up with the White Salmon Club, a Rotary Club of White Salmon in the USA. We are now partnering with the Rotary Club of Bungoma Magaribi, who are our host club, and we are also partnering with the county government of Bungoma, um, specifically the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Health. May I now take the pleasure? to officially open this building. My name is Cameron Kays and I'm the chair currently of the Harambe Center. And the Harambe Center is an international non-governmental organization uh, that operates connecting the Pacific Northwest to Eastern Africa, specifically Uganda and Kenya. We do a variety of projects, 
specifically to help um, women and children in different fields such as healthcare, education, um, and economic development. So the Harambe Center um, is one of the key partners in the Nachi Jolly Project. We have been involved in the organizing implementation and then we'll continue to carry out uh, the Nachi Jolly Project once Rotary is gone. So we've been there every step of the way from the community assessment to the implementation to the first day to every single weekly, bi-weekly, monthly meeting. Um, we're hands on the ground trying to connect different organizations to help um, easily facilitate communication and resource uh, connections. However, we've also um, been a part of every stage in working with the Ministry of Education, with finding the location, with um, trying to find teachers and uh, funders for development projects. So we helped, um, we are the host NGO, so most of the fundraising goes through the Harambe Center. And since we have so many, we have such a large donor community who's so connected to the area, it was um, pretty easy for us to, to get those funders to help donate and support um, the initial costs. But then going forward, we're going to be the ones who, for the next five years, will continue the project, continue the scholarships, um, making sure everything's running smoothly and adapting to all the, the changing needs that come up through, through the process. this particular institution, we have uh, 25 uh, teenage mothers who have gotten direct sponsorship uh, by Najijali together with the uh, other partners. Now, most uh, these teenage mothers have their children, the youngest being eight uh, months, uh, a child at eight months. They have made sure that all these children are taken care of in the uh, child care section. Indeed, the child care section is a building together with the uh, uh, kitchen and uh, uh, offices sponsored by the Najjali team with its uh, partners and the county government also did half of the uh, contribution to the, to the construction. Uh, we have teachers from the county government who are paid by the uh, county government. That's how we partner and then most of the programs are sponsored by the uh, Nigeria team together with the partners I've mentioned. This project is designed to, to gather young women, mothers who are struggling, and give them self-esteem, give them skills, give them the opportunity to earn income and transform their lives. I think if it continues to be supported by the community, by each organization, each of the stakeholder organizations, and it is funded, that it will last for many years. And these, these young women will become successful, they will become strong in their families, and they will become mentors for other young women in the future. So we have scheduled for the grant portion of the program two classes of 25 girls and each girl will impact three to 10 people in their immediate family and in their community um, once they have completed their school. The impacts are made from the purchasing of different supplies and materials that the school will use. And once the girls become independent and they start their own businesses, then they will be further impacting not only their families, but their communities as well. I'm actually very excited about the future because since the Department of Education has become so involved in the project, I think that it has a lot of opportunity. Initially, for the first two classes, the girls will be learning to tailor or sew. And what our hope is, is that because it's based within a vocational training center, that other skills will be offered in the future. Kama isinge kwa ina jijali, mi nisinge kwa hapa sai nilipo. Sai najua kushona, nimejifunza vitu mingi kushona, shati, skirt, dress, na kinyasa. Na ishukuru sana hii na jijali, imenielimisha sana na mtoto wangu. Nimeona maisha yangu sasa anabadilika. Na jijali project kama mimi mzazi. Imenisaidia how to care my child, kama nime, nime maliza shule, nime pata kazi. Ita nisaidia sana kulea mtuto wangu, na pia ita nisaidia kwa maisha na kushugulikia mandugu zangu wenye mebaki.
Mimi ninapenda kuwashukuru na jijali kwa kile ile lenye wamekifanyia acha kwa tunajua kama tumeza fika hapa but mali wametutua ni mbali na warudisha shukurani samani asanti one thing we are trying to tell families and the community uh, we are trying to tell them that they should embrace these young girls they should not uh, make them feel uh, uh, isolated in the community they should try to understand put themselves in their shoe and understand why whatever happened happened because it is it can never be the wish of these young girls to be where they are so we have to encourage the community to embrace them.